So this is the Clocked Out Podcast. I don't know if he, I don't know if anyone told, or I told Jack the yeah. name. I don't know if you ever knew the name. I, I watched the first episode. You did watch, yeah, you watched it in school. Which yeah, I, I, was listened, like, I listened to it in school. I was school. like, Liam, we weren't pay, doing anything. pay attention. So today we have Liam, Liam Callahan, Jack Leach, yes, and sir. I don't know your full name. Your Ethan Pearson. Ethan Pearson. Nice. Nice. We got a good, this is going to be a good crew to have. Yeah, I'm excited. Totally, yeah, I've been yeah, excited yeah. about this combo for a while now. Oh, yeah. Um, I know you've been waiting to hear uh, Ethan on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Dude, <laughs> for sure. Ethan's, Happy to be here. Ethan's our special guest today. And Ethan I remember, is the yeah. special guest. Yeah. Thank I you, loved, guys. I loved when you messaged me. You're like, I got someone I can bring on. I'm like, yes. yes. This is going to be yeah. good. So. The glasses the on. He looks, like, the glass. yeah. <laughs> he, looks enough, at, he looks enough like Carter. Oh, he does look we like were Carter. At my, uh, we were at my house and because he wanted to smoke before this. And, yeah. and then uh, I told him what we were doing. And he said Carter wasn't coming. So. Yeah, I was like, y'all need to sub in. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, text, I, I texted him, too. Mm-hmm. What I kind of wanted to loosely have the topic of this episode be is because I know both of you especially um, are very creative outside of your service industry jobs, really? and I feel like that's a pretty common like thing with people in the service industry. Mm-hmm. Like I know you do, you do acting, you do photography, and and you've done painting. some art as well, painting yeah, as well, modeling. Uh, and yeah, all that. All of it. I've done some dancing. Uh, and what about you? What are you thinking? You got anything like that? In- yeah, I, I mean, I've been making clothes for like shit a few mm-hmm. years. Nice. Okay, so yeah, I had a couple cool. of brands. I mean, I make music. Too. Too. Nice. I want. What kind of music? Like, uh, like new rap. Kind new of rap. Music. All That's right. Cool. Some underground. Yeah. I love that. So, we'll talk about all that. Mm-hmm. We'll start there, and we'll just briefly go through all our backgrounds. So, we'll just start with Liam, since you're right next to me. Liam, what is your service industry experience? Yeah. So, I started working in the service industry when I was 14. You know, it's mm-hmm. not. It's not like my mom was like making me get a job. Yeah. I just wanted to get a job. You know, like regardless of what it was. So, my first job ever was working at Chick Fil A. Oh really? Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually that. know that. Wow. You didn't know okay. that? Okay. Dude. It's a wonderful day here at Chick Fil A. My name is Liam. <laughs> oh, no, I get a name to start the no. PTSD attack. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But no, I was I was fourteen. I was making eight fifty an hour. Oh my god. Yeah, at Chick Fil A. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they don't they, they don't were, make they a lot of money. They were exploiting your ass. A little bit, well, but no, well, I, I that wasn't, wasn't even that long ago too. Like that was that seems was like that should have been a higher. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> about four years ago, about three, four years ago, but yeah, uh, it feels like that should have been higher. But okay, Go but on. yeah, even even in the that food industry, you don't mm-hmm. get tips at all. Which I eventually left to work at an ice cream shop for a summer because I got I think I went from making eight fifty to like twelve fifty oh, with yeah. tips, and oh, then yeah. I worked there for nice. a little bit until my sister got the job at Burger Dive, and then she told me that I could quit and work there. And I did. Oh, okay. And then I only worked with her a few times before she quit. I don't even think I knew that that's how you got to the bar was through your sister. I yeah, just thought you either. were there first. I wasn't even, I, I think I was 15 at the time. I wasn't even old enough to actually work there. And so you're still at the bar, mm-hmm. but you're thinking you're going to be out when you graduate? Well, yeah, I'm going to try to get into a college, obviously, maybe Mankato or uh, Duluth. But Shout out Mankato. Shout out Soren. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah, that's I. I'd figured that Mankato if I'm going farther away, I don't want to make the drive. I'd no. much rather just find another job. All right, all right. So that is Liam, Jack. What about you? Where are you coming to us from? And you have a lengthy service industry experience. I do. So I, let's see. I'll break it down here. I started working when I was 15. I always wanted to work. I was doing things before then to to get money, but I could never find anywhere that would hire me at 14. Mm. But so I started when I was 15 at Panino's, uh, in North Oaks. And I worked there for a while. I was there two, maybe three years. Um, And that was really an interesting experience, I got to say, because it's it's a family owned restaurant. So it's, you know, you can get away with a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot goes down, really. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to fish for the memories. Yeah, yeah. That was the Italian but, restaurant. Yeah, okay. yeah. Can I interrupt you? Really Ita- quick I use something? Italian use loosely. Um, my mom's office was right. right. It's yeah, still is yes. right next to the Panino. So we used to go there all the time a oh, few no. years ago. <laughs> and I'm almost positive he served me one time. Yeah, like seriously. But that was before you two were friends. Times. Yeah, exactly. We didn't that even know each other. Really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Okay. All right. It's small weird. World. Small world. Nice. <laughs> right. Nice. So a few years there. Mm-hmm. And so and then while I was working there, I've overlapped jobs a lot. And um. So while I was working there, I would shop at Banana Republic in Rosedale a lot, and it was to the point where they literally said, hey, our discount is 50%, apply, and you have the job. Because Whoa. I shopped here so You're often, so- I was like, they were like, why don't you just get Honestly, the Honestly, they knew discount? you had good style. Yeah, really. Yeah, they see what he's coming in. Come on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> and so I, I did. I barely had an interview, and I got the job. 
and it was only up until recently that I stopped working there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so I was working both of those jobs. And while I was working those two, for one summer, I worked a third job at the moving company. So three jobs all at once. That's right. Oh my gosh. Um, a moving company, a restaurant, and retail. I was really mm -hmm. like getting all of it in one bite. And um, the moving company probably has some of the craziest stories. Oh, I can imagine. Just because of the the like everything is a variable. All the all the the houses you get, the people you get, the people you mm -hmm. work with, you never know. It was always hilarious. And I mean. Like one of the initiation things for moving is you got to smoke crack. So everybody you work with is a crackhead. <laughs> Just crack? <laughs> yeah, no, because, oh man, there's this one guy who, uh, who, who was diabetic and he, and he had to shoot up insulin while he was on the, on the job site. Like while we're moving stuff, he's got to go to his car. He, and he was a crackhead for sure. Like oh, he yeah. was like a shaky, like skinny yeah. little guy. Mm, yeah. And, uh, and, and he would have to go to his car to go fucking shoot up. Mm -hmm. And it just looked like he was doing heroin. Mm, yeah. <laughs> How do you yeah. know he wasn't? Did you ever check? Uh, I think I no. asked him, but honestly, he, it might have been a mix. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I didn't get I, tipped on that job. I do believe that he did at some point have to go and actually do his insulin because, like, when you're mo when you're yeah. moving and doing activities like that, that is when it like spikes and you need to oh, yeah. hit up. But I could also see him yeah, then being needles. like, "Great, they've seen me do this before. They won't yeah. question that I'm doing it. You know, just doing yeah. my insulin in the car. Hey, when the belt comes out, it's, <laughs> it's all. <laughs> 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 and uh, okay, so. After working there for one summer, I went back down to two jobs, mm -hmm. and um, and then I quit. Let's see, I quit Panino's because we were going through a lot of um, managerial like there was just a lot changing, and they weren't paying me much, and like it was just really kind of a shitty place to work. Mm -hmm. And so I, I left there, and then I I stayed at Banana Republic for a while, and then most recently I started working at. Um, the Piper Building at Alina, uh, doing valet. Oh, okay, I knew you were doing valet, but I didn't mm -hmm. know where it was. That's yeah. a nice building to yeah. be doing valet. At. And it's pretty cool because it's like it's interesting because it's valet at a hospital. I never like would have even considered that to be a thing. Right. Um, but I got in um, really easily. Just like most of my jobs, I tend to never have to interview. Um, because I like know people in the business. Mm -hmm. They see the fit. Yeah, like, yes. I, just, yes. I pull up like this, and they yeah. just you're hired. Yes, yes, um, exactly. I, I've been there for about two weeks now, coming up on two and a half probably. Nice, nice. Um, and it's been great so far. It's another wonderful, unconventional job. Oh yeah. Because the people you work with are very interesting. There's a ton of them, mm -hmm. and we kind of just fuck around all the time. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Nicest nice. car you've driven so far in Ooh. your two weeks. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, this is... Okay, I got to say my favorite car I've driven mm -hmm. was this brand new Lincoln Navigator because I hopped in, turn on the heated seat, and then the seat controls pop up, and there's a massaging option. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm just rolling because we got to drive a little bit yeah. for like to bring it back to the Piper building. All right. I'm taking my sweet time. Oh, yeah. I'm, I got the massage. I'm going through all the options. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying every one, trying out the different heat settings and shit. Like, mm. I'm having a great time. And then, like, there was kind of a, a congestion in where we're, um, where we're bringing the car. Mm -hmm. And so I was at a standstill. I was like, this is fine. I can I can oh, lay yeah. here all day. I'll, I'll just wait. Sure. <laughs> I'll wait it out. So that was probably my favorite car. Nice. I've driven a couple Teslas. Okay. Um... Maybe not nicest, but you were in that SRT too. Uh, I was in a straight piped SRT. Whoa. Uh, okay. Like, um, what is it? The Grand Cherokee. Grand yeah, Cherokee. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. Sick, dude. Yeah. Mm. All right, yeah, I have lots of questions about about that, but I want oh, to real quick hit on, hit on Ethan and his, yeah, his experience. You're going to hit on street. Ethan? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. You brought him over here. You yeah, knew, yeah, you yeah, knew yeah. what you were. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> he knew what he was getting into. All right, Ethan, what's your history? History. We talking about the pizza place? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And any other service industry stuff you might have done? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I worked at the pizza place like a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started calling in sick all the time. So <laughs> that that's why it, it ended. What uh, what pizza place was that? <clears throat> Fresh Pick Pizza over uh, ninety six in Lexington. Mm -hmm. Nice Shoreview. Yeah. Uh, so did you quit or did you get fired? Oh, I yes. He said, um, "Don't come in." He, said, he said, "If you pick up some shifts, maybe we can get you back on the schedule." 
Mm. And then you didn't respond, right? Yeah, no way I'm responding to that. I wanted Walk to be away. out of there fast, bro. Because at the time, I was making clothes and stuff. I was like, I got a little bit of money right now. I'm mm-hmm. going to make these clothes, and I'm going to make money. And I'm not going to have to get that pizza job. But yeah, yeah. then, you know, reality kind of hit me after a little bit. Mm. But, I mean, I got a new job now Okay, o- nice. over at Water Wave. Nice. That's on Como. Selling shoes. We got music studio in there. Yeah. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah. It's a retail store. Like yeah. A yeah. Music shoes, studio. Dang. Lot of, okay. A lot of designer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So are you still making clothes at the moment, or are you taking a, a little break from I'm that? still designing still them. Yeah, I haven't really gotten too many things in hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that's still hopefully a dream mm-hmm. for down the road. For sure. Nice. I love that. I yeah. can I making could never clothes. do that, but that, that's really cool. I really like that. You can be as creative as you want with that. Exactly. I like, that's why I like music, that's too. What it's your own brand. You make it. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Absolutely. Any creative out, outlet like that, I just, I love that. That's why my, my dream has always been to be a creative director for my own fashion brand. Yes, mm-hmm. you'd be great because, at that. Thank you. Because then I'm just doing, I get to do the best part, which is design the clothes and test fit the clothes and, like, and make cool stuff and mm-hmm. then all yeah. the other business parts are sort of handled by yeah uh, people, oh, people who are want certified to do that, to do that. <laughs> yeah people who enjoy looking at numbers mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. those freaks <laughs> All the someone's got to do it, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone's, someone's got to do it. It has to get done. Someone's got to do it, mm-hmm. so I don't have to. God bless them. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't be done. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, I love that, like, a lot of us, like, we all kind of started working young, and we jumped right mm-hmm. into the service industry. <laughs> Welcome to this shitty world. Yeah. And uh, you're not going to get paid to do much, and you're going to suffer quite a bit but yeah. um but you learn a lot along the way and obviously mm. you know if you don't like a place you, you leave which i was going to ask you is was there a reason you left the moving company in general was it just juggling the three jobs or was it you know, yeah, other reasons I, it was really just because um i stopped working there because it, it turned winter and i didn't want to move in the winter that oh, just yeah, sounded awful that. so i said i might come back next summer i might not but i really just um I didn't want to commit to that mm-hmm. because I didn't know where I'd be working at in the next summer. Right. So, um, but I guess I never wound up going back yeah. just because I found better. I feel like that would definitely give some some cool stories. Oh my um, God. <laughs> whether or not your coworkers are on crack, but seriously, you never know. Insulin. Yeah. Insulin. Yeah, I'm <laughs> insulin. Thank you. Thank you. But so you were doing that throughout the Twin Cities here. Yeah. So, oh gosh, I feel like there's got to be some crazy like. Man, what about like crazy people that you had to deal with? Ooh, like people that you were moving. Other than coworkers. Other than, other than yeah, yeah, other than coworkers. No. Yeah. I remember there was one house that I moved. <clears throat> that was a whole. It was a whole family of Indian people. The one like oldest lady, uh, who was probably she looked really old. She had to be like a great grandma probably. Oh. Um, was just sitting in the like middle of the house, just watching over everybody. On like the last remaining chair as you're taking everything yeah, out like, exactly. around her. Yeah, so we're just moving boxes and stuff around her and she's just like like hmm. sitting there. I, she was breathing. Yeah, you're right. Sure, but, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was but, a little concerned. So, but eventually at some point you were like, hey, we got to take that chair. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, exactly. Okay, good. Thing. She get off the chair before you moved it? Or... We had to pick her up. Can you? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not a specific customer, but this just came to mind too. There was one job we got, which was, this is just, this goes to, to show the unconventional part. Oh boy. Because, so... It was a special job, like mm-hmm. a, a really nice house in uh, Minnetonka, mm-hmm. and um, there were four of us there, and so they paid extra, a lot extra, because I so I would get base twenty dollars an hour. Okay. Okay. On this job, I got thirty. Okay. Nice. nice. Um, plus the tip. Yeah. And they paid extra for all of us to have background checks, or oh. so they thought. Oh, right. Or so your company's telling them. We like... yes, we were quite literally instructed. To say we were different people who had background checks at the company. No. Who what was your name? That no. What was way. your name? Ironically, it was Jack. <laughs> there was another, <laughs> another Jack who had a background it's check. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. So I didn't have to. I didn't have to lie much. But that's crazy. Did they ins- give a reason as to like why you wanted to be background checked? I don't or? know. I think that was something. I think that's something we offered. Like okay. for you know people who have the money and wanted to get some right. If you offered it, like, why would they have to give you different names? I don't know. I guess we like <laughs> the, we were pretty booked that day or something, and the yeah. people who had background checks 
like we're on other jobs. Somet- yeah. Them. But yeah. You know what? That's fine. nothing That's fine. went missing <laughs> no, and no, the no. move was great. Yes. It was also a really hot day out. I have a video on Snapchat oh. of one of my um, co-workers wringing his shirt out. No. Of sweat. From sweat? Of Yikes. sweat. You're probably very happy to not be. Yeah, I'm sure you could go was, back. I that's, could. That's kind of the thing. I right? could go back. It was good money, but also it was very, it was physically demanding. But the thing that people kind of don't remember is like 90% of it is boxes. Oh, yeah. And as long as you're not getting a box full of books, mm-hmm. you're good. Those book boxes, they'll catch you by surprise, though. Mm-hmm. And then tipping, that's what was, I was going to touch on because you mentioned tipping earlier. And actually, I had no idea how, like, I know how tipping works in the food industry because yeah. I've been in the food industry. But I remember when I did my first move out here, um, my dad was with me, but he was, like, mm-hmm. upstairs at the time when we were all done. They're like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, you can tip if you want. And I just defaulted to 20% because that's what yeah. I'm used to in the service industry. And I went back upstairs and told my dad, he's like, you do not tip 20% on a move. And I was like, I don't <laughs> fucking, like, I don't know. So, like what were the tips like when you were there and like what do you what was the guidance or like the general rule of thumb it really varies i think it, it i don't know if there is really a general rule of thumb it kind of yeah. it depends on who the customer is mm-hmm. how many people are on the job and how mm-hmm. fast we get it done sure sure you know i think that's the that's the criteria for a good tip most of the time mm-hmm. um you know they'd give everybody like a 20 yeah, yeah. so they're spending and maybe if there's four people everybody gets a 20 it's a hundred dollars yeah, they're yeah. spending yeah um but I, I, would, I think the best tip I've gotten was $175 for Holy me. Holy shit. Yeah. For you? Yeah. What did you do on that move? Yeah. Um, not much, <laughs> I gotta say. Awesome. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. And like, oh, now I want to talk about the valet, but I feel like oh, yeah. we got to we gotta give some other love around the table. Yeah, I'm, here. Talking, so let's, let's I'm talking talk, too much. Let's talk to Liam. Yeah. Um, yeah. Liam, tell us about your shirt. My shirt. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. My uniform. Liam, Liam I, came straight from work. I was saying, yeah, the he's the only the one who's got the physical proof yep. that yes, he works fast um, food. <laughs> I would have dressed a little better, but so you're still Good at the Burger days. Dive, uh-huh. and you're hopefully, but you're hopefully going to graduate in May. What what month is it? Um, probably June. Right? I think like early August, June. Really? No, no, no. August. August. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I think I think May. Yeah. And then you're hopefully going to school for acting, though. Is the whole intention? No, I don't or... want to go to school. I think, I think honestly, acting in college is kind of a waste of money. That's what I'm talking about. Because it can only get you so much if you if you study if you take an acting class in college, which you can do. But mm-hmm. if you major in it, it's like you're only limited to these jobs when you have it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to school for communications. Okay, there you go. With okay. a side of broadcasting, so I have a little go. bit of both. Oh. But communications opens up a lot more broad fields that's like funny. if i wanted to i could become like a radio personality or yes. yeah. or like a tv show host so you're not going to study acting but you're going to keep acting yeah i'm going to try Good. to Good. my um the director for my shows that i'm mm-hmm. in right now at my high school he he um works for a talent agency that gets um people into commercial oh, like nice. local commercials okay. for okay. businesses and stuff like that yeah, so, so, got the so i can yeah. yeah as soon as i get my he said i just need like a headshot Oh, okay. that's basically we'll, we'll it. Senior photos. I got you. I was going to say, we, help. Yeah. we, we have, have a photographer yeah. with yeah, yeah, us yeah. right yeah. here. I already right. got him with the outfit for his senior photos. Yo, he did. Go. He hooked me up. I just took some of his senior photos yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah yesterday. Yeah. I need to come see one of your shows. Are you in any shows right now? Yeah. I'm in a show called You're in Town. <laughs> that's it's, right. Um, You're yeah. in Town. It's a... It's like, a comedy is it about where, pee? Yeah. Oh, wait. it is. It's, it's a, like it's, urine. Yeah, urine. Yeah, not yeah. you are in. No. Yeah, that's that's the pun. It's a comedy. Yeah, yeah but oh it's literally God. urine. Yeah. It's li- it's just like a show parody of a bunch of other shows. <laughs> but I play I play like the main bad guy. Nice. I do oh, want to nice. see that you playing a bad guy because yeah, I only yeah. ever see you like smiling and happy and service industry face. So I do want to see you like this yeah, alter ego. I want to see, <laughs> see you pissed off. Like, yes. Yeah. Do you scream totally. at people? Um. Pissed probably off. <laughs> yeah pissed off, pissed off. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah what exactly it. does the bad guy do in a, yeah in a, so, in a, in a urine show. town I'm movie. Sh- <laughs> so i'm the um i'm the uh, mayor of the town piss it's not the town, town? The, the, the town <laughs> isn't actually called urine town i don't oh. i don't think it's actually mentioned what the actual town name is but i'm a mayor it's and it's like set in new york city something like that okay. it's definitely you're in town yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they and just it, don't call it that, and it's like yeah. a it's kind of like a dystopian where all the waters like dried up so they okay. start like forcing people to spend money to go to the bathroom mm. right so it's it's kind of mm. like the poor people like rebel against the government and that's me and i'm like okay. super greedy how nice. do they rebel i um, want to see this I wanna like see in this. new york they just <laughs> they, piss um, everywhere no they steal my they steal my daughter and then oh my god to kill her. Jeez, oh my god the? yeah 
All right, this is intense. Still, daughter, she's like, I'm not even joking. She's like a, tied this, to the toilet like half of the show. This is I'm a high school joking. play. Yeah, Jeez. they're letting this fly. I have to. Well. I have to tell you, you're in town itself is actually death. <laughs> Oh That's what God. it means. When he, when I send people to urine town, I throw them off the top of my building. It's like the All right, spoiler alert. Yeah, 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 sorry, no. sorry about that. I want to come uh, see the no, show. I don't like. have to go yeah, see yeah, it yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. I've, I've never heard of you doing a. I don't want to say normal show because that's not the right word. This is not a normal. This, show. No, this yeah, is. I've, I've only far seen from. you doing these like really weird. Like, what was the last show you did? I, um, the last show I did was a show called Radium Girls. Yeah, I was like, I've never heard it. Like this, it's not like, like I was. I wasn't in these musicals, but I did like the Pit Orchestra, and we did like mm -hmm. West Side Story and Hairspray, and oh yeah, people ones you'd expect to hear not like not you're, you're in town, town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. i love that i do want to come and see you i did have a couple questions for you related to your acting i want to okay. put you on the hot yeah. seat here no nothing too crazy but um <laughs> how many shows have you even done do you not do i don't know an exact count but i started i started technically acting for my church when i was like five or six yeah. they'd say um take this from this one guy and you know mm -hmm. basically basic directions and then mm -hmm. You know, I just started, I started going into shows when I was in fifth grade. Oh, okay. And Sweet. then I've done about at least two shows every single year. What has been your favorite show? My favorite show was, um, it, it was called, it, it was, okay, so I have three shows every single year, right? Mm -hmm. Every single school year. I have the musical, which is right now, and then a one act, which is one act so it's like half of the time of a of a normal a, yes yeah. correct oh, okay and then a um actual play in the spring so my favorite show was one of the one acts i did last year mm -hmm. it was it was called um the complete history of theater abridged oh. and it was a it was a three no it was a four person show and i was playing shakespeare oh oh, wow. oh yeah and I don't remember who the other famous characters were, but there were two other people who were like famous throughout time, and we were basically trying to explain the complete history of theater. But it was like it kept breaking the fourth wall. The stage looked mm. like it was a curtain in the middle of the stage, and then like props mm. on the side, but they were still on the stage. So oh, it would yeah. be like we would so create like the illusion. Yes, stage. exactly. Yeah. We would create That's the cool. illusion yeah. that when we would go out the um, the little what's it called. <coughs> Stage. The little curtains, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the little there. curtains in the middle. We'd be on the stage mm. and then acting to a fake crowd of these right. high school <laughs> students, and then we would go back and like purposefully like act like we'd start crying or something like that. Oh, we'd wow. like throw props at each other, Dang. you know, stuff that the normal audience wouldn't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nice. That's yeah. kind of cool. That's it was cool. it was really concept. fun. It was really crazy. We started a lot later than other schools did, so I think we only had about three weeks to learn our lines and I had yeah, about like, 200 wow. lines. Oh my God. Well, so that was going to be one of my other questions was if you've ever forgotten your lines on stage and how you've handled that in the moment. I do, I do a lot of improv, but I've never, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with my pretty lines. Memory, memory yeah, yeah. I never, I don't think I've ever for. <laughs> I won't say ever because I've definitely <laughs> no, done it like, at least once. I just can't yeah. remember. There's more commonly people forget to show up on stage. Oh. Which could be very bad. It yeah, usually is be, yeah. really bad. <laughs> but that happened in Radium Girls. Someone for one scene didn't show up who was supposed to like knock on a door and interrupt me and someone else or something like talking. And I just basically like we knew he wasn't coming up, so oh, I just basically said all of his lines for him in like a format like I heard from this person. It was just improv. Oh wow. I didn't even know all Dang. of his lines. Okay, I just made like an you good. know, because it's not that's my job smart. to know that's his smart. lines. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Dang, okay, so you are pretty good with that. And I mean, yeah, if you still know the Chick-fil-A uh, spiel yeah, to this it's a day. Here too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, no, don't say it. <laughs> I have 8,000 points on the Chick-fil-A app. What? I go there very often. <laughs> you get to at least half the week. I yeah, love that. Like, I'll have, like, streaks mm -hmm. at Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, yeah, I'm eating Chick-fil-A today. And then the next day, I'm like, I could go for Chick-fil-A right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next day, it's Sunday, and I'm like, well, but I'm sure, like, I'm sure, like, do they have an app then for like yep. the points mm -hmm. and all that? Because yep. at a certain point, I'm sure they're also like, all right, feed this guy deals because like yeah. he probably will come in. No, sometimes they send me free stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My friend who still works there, mm -hmm. who I can't name because he still works. I don't know if he still does it, but he racked up points by whenever we would do drive-through. Whenever someone wouldn't use oh. their app, he would scan it for them. Which smart. Yeah, That's he good. still has a lot. I think he has. 120,000 something. Wow. Wait, what do you do with these points then? You get, get free food. food. You just keep. Yeah. Okay. It's like yeah, one yeah, chicken yeah. sandwich would be like, what, uh, 6,000 points? No, 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 not even. One chicken sandwich is like 
five hundred, and the meal was like. I was like gonna say, I feel like eight thousand is a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, well, uh, uh, whatever. He's not stealing money. It's Chick Fil A. Yeah, he's, you're right. You know, he's stealing no. points. From I don't him. know what well, he's kind collecting. of crime that is, but uh, stealing can't points, be. Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, I don't know some some kind of financial fraud. Yeah, oh yeah, that reminds me of a of a time when uh, so I dated this girl for a while, and uh, her dad was super loaded, mm-hmm. super and loaded. and I had her send me a screenshot of her dad. So she had. The, the Starbucks login. Oh, yeah. And I heard her send me a screenshot of his scan to pay page. I think I still have it, actually, but Shit. I've been advised not to use it. I use it every day. Yo! So every you, day. I would, get, I was just buying you coffee. Would, yeah. And I, I would use it every day, and I'd go get a venti iced chai latte with light ice, sweet vanilla cold foam, and a shot of espresso, which was $8. That's and then I'd one. get food. Okay. So yeah, yeah. he's getting like charged minimum sixteen dollars every day yeah, yeah. by just me. I'm not gonna lie, like I've used it before too. Oh yeah, I bought him. I bought nice. him Starbucks okay, so, before. Yeah. So sure. minimum every day is sixteen dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, but but so after we broke up, yeah. I kept using it, um, <laughs> and she knew it after oh, yeah. a little bit, and she didn't really care. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then eventually he like started to notice, mm. and uh, and I was advised to stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, yeah. I got probably thousands of dollars worth of free coffee. He was super rich. He yeah. like got a one point eight million dollar house on Minnetonka. Oh, like, okay. And, like, he's fine. He can afford sixteen dollar coffee yeah, every yeah, yeah, now yeah, and then. Every, every now and then, every day. <laughs> it's not. It's not as bad as because you are yeah. you were racking up points for him exactly. at the end of the day. So he's he got when, some of that back. When he wanted coffee, it was free. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all. It's a wash. Okay, uh, real quick, I'm going back. So your favorite, <laughs> your favorite musical was the one where you were Shakespeare. Was, it wasn't a musical, or but even, yeah. Uh, show yeah. was that also your favorite role? Because I figured those might be two different questions. I gotta think about. That's a good favorite question. Role? My yeah. favorite it role. Yeah. I think actually my favorite role was um, the role that I had for Radium Girls. Oh yeah. So um, what was that? I was the I was the head of the. Co- Do you guys know what? Nah. That is, no, no. that's even about it's no. it's a real historic <laughs> event where these um these factory workers were painting watches with I think it was some kind of radium yeah oh, it was straight yeah. up like radium because they were using some glow in the dark paint right for for World War One I, I think because oh, the, yeah, you know yeah. the soldiers like mm-hmm. needed to check their watch real story they would they would like paint all of these watch hands on like one by one and they would they would dip it in the paint with the uranium and then put it in their mouth to make sure the tip was still sharp so that they could keep doing it oh, and wow. they developed serious yeah, jaw cancers uh, oh yeah and like yeah. some one lady was pregnant and it was talking about like how it like melted and it's like seriously like Shit. it's messed up it was a messed wow. up event and my character another high school play yeah, yeah exactly my, what the hell is fridley on Dude, my, just do west side story <laughs> that's edgy enough <laughs> but yeah <laughs> my character was the um head of the company so i had to i had to show a, a sign of grief because he was inherently responsible for it yeah, but at the yeah. time literally nobody knew yeah and once he did know he tried to stop it mm. but there were other people in the company that were you know, deciding against it because they were making too much money. So he just had to live the rest of his life with wow. all this guilt of knowing wow. he gave like all these girls cancer. It was it was like an emotionally depth character. Were there good songs in that one too? Because no, I'm really there were trying no songs. to see why there was a, why you're picking these stories. <laughs> My fifth grade yeah. show was um, a show called Musicville. Okay. Where was, guess probably. what that one's about? Really quick, I'll probably give you like ten seconds. Music, a town about music. Is it like Footloose, like kind of a deal situation? Where? It was um, the Wizard of Oz, but everyone were, everyone was a different music note. Oh my god! So that's, I, um, how I was, was I supposed to guess? Yeah, that? Was, <laughs> exactly. That's why I made you try to guess. I my first guess was say. "You're in Town, but Music." Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, "You're in Town" already has music. But, wow. Well, All right, whatever. Okay. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. Why'd they call it Musicville and not the Music of Oz? That's good. I like that. Because they didn't have you um, they, as a right, writer when they, they were writing. They, they, they need your play. creative mind. I love <laughs> exactly. this. I love this. So, Ethan, then you worked at the pizza joint. Yeah, this yeah. guy needs to talk a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so that's, I wanted to ask. So, what, were you just making the pizzas? Were you delivering the pizzas? What were you, Bro, what were you I was, doing? I was doing dishes. Dish? I was oh. washing the floors. I was, yeah. They wouldn't let you near the food? Yeah, I'd make my food for my <laughs> break. But, you know, they, they had other people that, to make. Right. The owner, it was a small place. So the owner and, like, another dude would be making the food. But mm. when it gets busy and stuff, you know, I'm making salads. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but then that, oh, yeah, that's, 
I can definitely understand why you'd want to get out of there, though. If you're just <laughs> yeah. doing dishes, like... And salads. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, someone's got to yeah. do it. and But, yeah, to do that every single day or, you know, every mm-hmm. time you're in there... Dude, I'd get sad. I just started <laughs> calling in. I was I like, just bro, I would work in you the back depressed. doing dishes. I was just listening to that terrible music. Like, oh. just coworker music? No, I mean, sometimes <laughs> later when we would be like closing, kind of, one of my coworkers, he was playing. I think it was called like Joe Biden freestyle or something. Oh, yeah. So, like, the coworker <laughs> music there was interesting. I stopped going to that job. I started just like kind of hustling. Like, mm-hmm. I was finding stuff on Facebook, just reselling. I started selling on eBay. That picked up during the school year, you know. Like, get out of class, see so you just made, like, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. But, I mean, that slowed down. You're still talking about the couches. Couches, yeah, yeah. That was a big we, hustle. That was oh, when man. we kind of just started, like, just doing that pretty often. Yeah. I mean, we found a couch on Marketplace. It was free, so we went free and section, picked it up, man. put it in my storage unit, you know. And then we sell it to a person that's a block away no, from where even. we picked it up. The neighbor. Yeah. Of it. We Dude, picked it up at a house and we free. dropped it off for free. <laughs> and we dropped it off next door at an apartment. Like a week later a for week $700. Later for $700. I, Dude, this, wait, this is crazy because I can't even remember who it was, but I, like, I've seen someone on TikTok, like mm-hmm. some pretty famous person talking about like literally... He's like, this is literally the best side hustle ever, and it was the couch. You can it was make flip. really and good I was money. Like, I, right, and I've, I was like listening to him, to him talk about this. I'm like, it does sound like it's like good. I just like, yeah. I don't think I have enough like space or or time or whatever that's to, the to problem. do, to yeah, do you this. Get a story but sort of like see to meet two people who've actually done this yeah, or are mm-hmm. actively doing. That's fucking crazy. That's I'll just a, say, make sure you tie down your couches because he oh, did, I've, I've lost one for sure. He had one I mean, fly away on the highway. No, yeah. whole couch oh, geez. off the trailer. <laughs> Did it hit anyone or anything? <laughs> oh, no, everyone was cool. Okay, good. But but the some dude pulled up to me after I got off the freeway. He was like, did, did you have a couch in that trailer? Because <laughs> oh, I was just seeing a couch. Because it's You're like, no. Nope. I, didn't, I didn't notice when it fell out. It, right. it just like caught wind. And uh-huh. What couch, officer? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Dang, so you are still doing that or you just did that for a little Oh, little yeah, while. for sure. Nice. Still doing that. Nice. I mean... The hustle never stops. Right, man. right. And everybody needs a couch. Right, right. I mean, Dude. we're big into that. We're always hitting up garage sales. I'm yeah. on mm-hmm. Facebook all day. That's yeah. just like, that's how I make my money that's mostly. So, cool. so it's like, I probably went like a year or so just doing just that. Just doing that? And yeah, just doing that. That's crazy. But so, yeah, that's people. I, mean, I spent all the money. But oh, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. But, but you lived for a year off of just yeah, doing that. That's year, impressive, you know? actually. Are you into like collecting? Like you collect and trade Pokemon cards for profit? Um, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, something like that for me would be like clothes, mm-hmm. you know? Like making a profit, like finding a good rare piece of clothes mm-hmm. and selling it and trading and stuff. Like that's that's what I do with that. I think over the years, Pokemon cards have just become more expensive mm-hmm. and less rare. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah. the the gap is growing. I did sure. have a sale on eBay. Well, there was this this card I traded for in elementary school for something that was worth like five cents. I traded him for this Charizard, and then. Uh, like last year sold on ebay for like 200 dollars. the okay. charizards can go yeah, hard it was like, like 95 in good condition holographic i'm always trying to turn everything into a hustle yeah. but, but really, that's kind of like, like the world we, we're living in mm-hmm. these days like even the people who are stuck in corporate jobs like they mm-hmm. don't they don't want to be that's what yeah, I, I'm, they're, I'm, you're trying to employ yourself yeah. as much as you can no the hustle culture is real though so and you it sounds like you found a pretty like a lot of successful ways to navigate it mm-hmm. so if you lived off that for a year yeah. out in minneapolis where i think like they just there was an article that came out recently. It was like, how much do you need to live comfortably? Or, yeah, how much do you need to make a year to live comfortably in Minneapolis? And it was six figures. I'm like, yeah. there's not a lot of people out here making like I saw, uh, making six figures. I saw that the American dream costs like $4 million oh, today. Yeah. Like, absurd. Uh, ridiculous. It depends it's on what absurd. your dream is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the stereotypical American dream yes. that was like achievable in the 60s. Mm-hmm. You know? White mm-hmm. picket fence. Yes, the white picket fence, mm-hmm. two kids and a dog. Mm-hmm. And a job and a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, an old dream from back when they could get houses for mm-hmm. hundred bucks. <laughs> I was cents. born in the wrong time. Yeah, period, right. Honestly. Oh my gosh! Seriously, I Seriously. would thrive in the '60s. Yes, I mean, look at me. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. So, 
So clothing is another clothing and fashion is another one of your creative hobbies as yes, well, sir. right? So how long when did that you know, become <laughs> like exclusive. yeah? Was that a thing since you were young, or when did you start to really get into fashion and, and thrift or vintage? Yeah, so I, I would say the vintage stuff was more recently, but okay. I've been dressing myself ever since I was twelve. Nice. Um, I really just enjoyed, you know, being able to choose what I wear, and mm -hmm. then eventually sort of expressing myself through what I wear. Yeah. And um, and it's really just kind of evolved from there. Mm -hmm. I probably. Probably for about two years now, I've been really into into vintage stuff. Yeah. I, be, I like vintage stuff as a whole, vintage cars, books, clothes, mm -hmm. all of it, Vi mm -hmm. uh, music, everything. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's so cool. Yeah. Um, and so I, I figured why not combine, you know, fashion yeah. and vintage. And so I, I go kind of out of my way to find really old pieces, um, as old as I can, really, you know, whatever's not falling apart. Mm -hmm. Um, just cause I think it's such a cool, like, like this made it so far. Yeah. And I think that's something we're lacking in today's fashion too, mm. is stuff that lasts more than a year. Mm -hmm. Um, cause back then clothes were made so like, well, they were handmade yep. with so many details and everything was just much more routine. thought out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's kind of what I want to do mm -hmm. with like where I'm going in fashion. I want to make like really handmade thought out pieces more than the design you know exactly down to, the, down to each stitch each material exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. i really and that's why i worked at banana republic too they have the the real leather mm -hmm. the cashmere yeah. the suede yeah that's dude. on my feet right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> these are nice actually. those are nice yeah, yeah. Show them the camera. there you go Ooh. oh damn those are nice Feel them. Yeah. Smell them even. They're I, I yeah. literally, this is my first time wearing them. I smell bought them. Actually, smell yeah, they the do. Better. They I do bought it. No, my, my feet <laughs> smell do. good, Liam. Thank you very much. They do. Yeah, he's got yeah. a nice. That's good. They do. They, they do have the suede smell, though. Yeah, they definitely do. I like that. Ethan, yeah. how you know my feet smell like? <laughs> they be stanking up the room. <laughs> That's you, bro. <laughs> I'm playing. He's right. Um, I got good hygiene. Well, and I loved, uh, that's what I loved about, uh, you know, from the outside perspective of seeing mm -hmm. you work at Banana Republic is it seemed like for the most part you could wear whatever you wanted. There wasn't yeah. like a uniform shirt that you had to show up in. It was like you can continue to express yourself. And like when people ask you or like notice you because they're noticing you because you're looking good. Yeah. You'd be like, hey, come check out Banana Republic. Exactly. Like, so, yeah. Um, but I'm assuming the restaurant you were in, you had to wear kind of a uniform and had, yeah. and had to be a little less expressive. Yeah, um, yeah. Is it the valet kind of too? Uh, do they have a uniform yeah, there? Yeah, they've got a polo that you got to wear and we're getting some jackets for the winter. But mm. um, some people do kind of just wear whatever they want. Right. Um, so I think once I warm up to it, yeah, yeah. I'll start wearing like, you know, just shit you wouldn't need to wear like a suit mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> would you would you still try to like when you were at the um italian restaurant still try to be expressive with like accessories oh, yeah. or, exactly. or through other avenues yeah, yeah so what i would do is i would keep the you know the work polo on mm -hmm. but i would throw on uh different sunglasses nice. different jacket different um i would try to switch up the necklace every every time oh yeah um you know stuff like that mm -hmm. just to still have my touch to it yeah yeah but without Nice. You know, getting in trouble. And were you directly interacting with customers at that restaurant, or were you more in yeah. the back of the house? I was a bit of both. So okay. I started there as a busser, mm. and then I worked my way up to uh, an expo food runner. Nice. And uh, I did a little bit of serving as well, but um, I kind of just stayed in the expo position because they they really paid me well for what I did. I kind of did nothing and got fifteen an hour. Oh, sick, um, dude. Yeah. And so I would basically just sit at the food window and like tell people where to bring the food. Because at that point, I had worked there longer than most of the people. Oh. And so I knew exactly what every panino and sandwich and food item came out looked like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I could immediately identify it mm -hmm. and then be like, all right, this, this, and this. I'm yeah. on to table five. Go ahead. Nice, nice. Or maybe bring them if I had to. But, sure, sure. You know. What's the largest tip you ever made at Paninos? <laughs> Ooh, that might be tough to remember. If you can remember, know, yeah. Because most of our tips, most of our tips were pooled, um, right? And then which, you know, split up, which sucks. I yeah, I'm, I'm dealing. Know. I'm dealing with that now. Yeah. And it's, uh, oh, really? Cash? Even as a bartender? Yeah, because well, so in general, there's two. There's always two bartenders on staff in general at this place because it's it's. The, the bar itself is about the size of what we were dealing with in the mall, but then okay. they got the cocktail room and the patio, so there's yeah. just more seats. Um, so there's two bartenders, and then, yeah, we do still split them with the servers, but they do split them by, I don't know if, like, if you guys, it would just be, like, split evenly. With us, mm -hmm. it's like, 
oh, Jared was here nine hours, but Liam got cut after three. So Liam's uh, only making three, you know, that proportion. We're not getting you know, the very same accurate. amount. That makes sense. I, yeah. <laughs> That's how it should be, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, it, it does. I, can't, I, I see both sides just playing tips. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, having not split tips at all for the last, like, three years, I'm like, this fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, splitting tips is, I don't know. It, yeah. it can be a little frustrating. Yeah, especially when, because they had moved it, too, from cash tips to on the paycheck. So then it all gets taxed. That's awful. That's what I'm. Do- that's, that's we made we made that transition too, and I'm not mm-hmm. a fan of that one at no, all. Like not I'm, at all. I loved walking out of the mall with like with just cash. Like I got yeah. 200 bucks in cash or and, whatever it was. And, and I'm loving great. cash tips at the valet yeah. job, though it's not oh. much. You'll okay. get maybe 20, 30 dollars a day, 50 mm-hmm. if you're lucky, like mm-hmm. on the top end. But um, you know, it's really it really does vary on like who you get yeah. and how many cars you get. But uh, the best tip I've gotten was a whole twenty dollar bill. Nice on like my first return of the day, which was awesome. Sick, great, great way yeah, to start the day. Exactly. I do think uh, that I'll get more tips in the winter. Oh yeah, because like Absolutely. pity tips. Because you know, if I just get oh. out of the car, I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. You're like, here's a twenty. So far though, tips are are decent at your new job though. Or? Oh yeah, no- yeah. Uh, I counted like a little over three hundred. Nice. In cash over like a week and a half of working there. Nice. So, okay, okay. yeah. Well, Can't and, complain. Because you weren't getting any tips at Banana Republic, right? No. So none of that. No. And you said no the ba- you said, in general said the base pay is higher, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I was getting jack shit at Banana Republic. Right. And so that was that was the other thing I wanted to briefly talk about, if you were okay with it. Yeah, was like, absolutely. So you, you said that they basically were refusing, refusing to give you a raise, right? Yes. You did ask for a raise yeah. a few times, or how did that uh-huh. work? And so that's what I really hate about like corporate jobs like yes. that, because then it's like Banana Republic. Rosedale through Banana Republic through Gap Inc. You know. Oh yeah. Um, and so I I started there at uh, f- fifteen, I believe. Okay. At fifteen years old, and they got me at fourteen dollars an hour. Maybe a year later, I get like a seventy cent raise. So I'm uh, at like yeah. fourteen seventy, 70 one. <laughs> no, that is how it works. Though yeah. it's, it's so crazy. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, but then they started hiring people at sixteen dollars an hour. Oh, and, and you I'm were like, making. I'm that. like, hey, you let me catch up, up here. Yeah. Like, why can't we just boost my pay to sixteen an hour? And yeah. they were like, we can't do like, uh, we got to go through HR and oh, like, whatever. And then eventually they were like, my my manager was like, so basically what I'm hearing is you're gonna have to prove yourself. Like basically, I would have to pre- present myself and tell them why I'm worthy of making the same pay as somebody who just started. Wow! And at that point, I was like, "Yeah, that's no, that, not happening." Because I've been with and, you guys. Yeah, and they said that I would have to do that after two months. Okay. No. They were like, they were like, "Yeah, we gotta wait like two months, and then you can present yourself." No. I'm like. I'm out. Screw that. Right. Yeah. Plenty of other options that you could still be with him. Like, valet is still technically, mm-hmm. that. I would. that's still all, hospitality. Yeah, it's still hospitality. There's so much more to the hospitality industry, and that's part of the reason I'm doing this cast, is I want to have all kinds of people on here to talk about their segments and their journeys and the, the stories they've had. Oh, yeah. I haven't even gotten to asking you. I want to ask you stories <laughs> about Banana I know. Republic. Oh, oh, man. Banana Republic. Um, because, like, what are my questions here? I think I have questions about if anyone ever stole from you <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, yes, all or the like, time. <laughs> all, all the time, and okay. we let it happen. I was going to, okay, I was going to, okay, so they literally told you to just let it happen? So they didn't really tell us that, but that's what everybody did. I never actually saw anybody stealing, so I mm-hmm. never really got to chase anybody at the store or anything fun like that. Yeah. Um, but I know, because we would always put the leather jackets, $500, $600 leather jackets, in the first room. So people would just run away with them. Like, it yeah. was that easy. Yeah. You would just go in, grab it, and walk away. Some people would drop things in their bags. Mm-hmm. Some people would, you know, put stuff on in the fitting rooms, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it did happen a lot, and we kind of just, you know, we just report it to AP and uh move on Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) well it's like how easy is it to detect if someone grabs a belt along with a bunch of other stuff goes into a fitting room yeah tries everything on and then just while Uh, putting on their normal clothes they leave with the belt what exactly yeah stuff stuff like that happens too much to maintain i mean at, at the end of the day that stuff should all be i mean i guess I don't know if they, you know, they might not, but it should be all insured anyway. So it yeah, should, yeah. you shouldn't it's, have to track that down and, and stop that, especially with, I don't know, I feel like the stories I keep seeing these days of like interactions between customers and workers, mm-hmm. like you don't want to end up in a situation yeah. where like, <laughs> no, sure, it's five, it's an expensive jacket. Is it worth more than potentially your life? Yeah. No. Or like even going to the hospital? Probably no. not. That's But tough. I mean, you know. I've got one of those jackets now. Yeah. Somebody was trying to steal it from oh, me. Oh, that's yeah. you, worth my you life. Throw you throw it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You throw it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did anyone ever... Um, 
try to fight you at the Banana Republic? Or like, no. Uh, no, I feel I like, not I feel like you guys probably aren't doing too many, like, <laughs> Not that I'm allowed to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. There, there have been some funny things going on there. We oh, had yeah. uh, four dudes come in with, like, they got, like, backwoods backpacks on, mm-hmm. and, like, they're, like, looking around. One of them was, like, off perks or something, and then they're oh, like, hey, I've got $200 in gift cards. I need them in $50 gift cards. And then the other guy was like, hey, I also have a $200 gift card I need in 500 gift cards. And, and they were like... Absolutely not. We were like, yeah, we can't we can't do this. And then eventually we got them to confess what they were doing. No And way. they told us what site they were getting these gift cards on, and they were like, they, like, confessed the whole thing, and they left. <laughs> that's wild. Okay, yeah. wow. The fact that you actually got that. That's yeah, awesome. right? And, but, uh... I know another time we had a whole group of people. I just think this was funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a whole group of people walk in on the men's side mm-hmm. and then turn around and walk out and walk in on the women's side. What? And I it's was open like, in the middle. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, why'd you do that? And they were like, it was cold over there. Okay. It's oh, the did, same. It's, did the you same ask? Yeah. It's, it's one big store. You, you don't have like a, a men's I, thermometer. Or yeah. No, maybe they were standing under a fan or something. I, uh, maybe, I don't know, man. But... Uh, people yeah people, these, people. Uh, did you ever have to call um security, oh, security. On, yeah um, on anything that wasn't you know someone stealing like you no. know someone acting crazy or... I, we we have had someone acting crazy i remember there's this old lady like so a lot of people would leave disappointed sometimes because sure. um well there was this one lady i don't remember exactly what she wanted but because someone else was uh helping with uh someone else was helping her but on her way out, she was very irate, and she was like, she like called my manager a bitch or something across the whole store. Yo, as she was leaving, she was like, "He's a bitch." And, so you and about your manager? Out. Yeah, yeah. Walked out and then and went then into left. the yeah. women's section. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. the manager wasn't yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. He's better over here. Exactly. Wow. Um, wow. That was really something. But never had to call security or anything. That's good. Um, we would have a lot of people be really disappointed, sometimes on the brink of tears, because they would come in with Banana Republic factory returns. That's oh, our outlet store. and that you can't. And yeah. that we can't take because they have different product than yeah. us, and we would just have to ship it back to a factory store, yeah. which just costs us money. Yeah, so you're not doing uh, that. Yeah, we, we couldn't take it. And everybody was always mad about that because they don't differentiate Enough. Very well. Uh, the factory items have three stars on the tag. Oh, that's how you know. That's how, yeah, yeah. Um, and so most people wouldn't know because right. they're also on the same website. They look the same, but everything's on sale. So they order stuff, and then they're like, "Hey, this doesn't work. Where's my nearest Banana Republic?" And they go to yeah. Rosedale. And um, that kind of brings up something that I was just talking to a friend about. Oh no, a customer brought this up to me because I know. So at the bar, mm-hmm. uh, we no longer do happy hour on the weekends. We only do it on weekdays. So I like told that to one of our customers the other day, or they, they like asked, like, "Oh yeah, isn't it happy hour?" I'm like, "We had to take that away on the weekends," and they were just like, "Huh." That sucks that they make you, like, tell us that. And it's yeah. kind of like, I feel like the same with you. It's like, it sucks right. that they can't differentiate enough on their own where they should be. So yeah. you have to be the messenger or the bad guy to exactly. be like, I can't I can't help you with this. Because you lady... would help them if you if you could. Yeah. You literally would. Yeah, I had one lady who, uh, who I told her, and she was, like, on the brink of tears. She was like, yeah. she was like, seriously? I, I, I drove 30 minutes oh, to be here. Jeez. I was like, yeah, you got to go to St. Louis Parker Egan. That's where our two locations are, the mm. factory store. Oh, the factory it's not your fault she's yeah. crying. Yeah. No, what are you supposed to do? Like, yeah. but we feel bad. Like, do, you yeah, but, to, do you want me to drive you there? Do you there? want me to take you there? Uh, I actually yeah. used to, yeah. Like, Honestly, yeah. I'm sick of this shift anyway. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uber uh, would probably pay me more. Yeah. But good thing you never really had to call security. I mean, we've had to a couple of times. Yeah. But oh, I yeah. Feel like I think you were working at this time when mm-hmm. someone stole a bunch of stuff from American Eagle. They tackled yep, yep, that, yep. that person to the they ground. Did. I, oh, yeah, they, wow. yeah, they tackled. I was watching the whole. It was so dead in the mall. The, the whole Banana Republic store was outside the store watching this unfold <laughs> on the on the, on the the second story. It was an upper story. Yeah, we were, it was on the second no story. Like, we walk out the store and you can look up to the right and see yeah. it uh, like through the glass um, mm-hmm. oh, rail. Oh, yeah, the railing. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, and so we're just watching like five cops wrestle this like this lady to the ground. They had to use two handcuffs because it didn't reach behind her back. And oh, it was like geez. it took a really long time. And it was really loud. And that's crazy. It was wow. Really, the okay. best thing that happened on that shift. Mm-hmm. Like the rest of the shift was just boring. Right. <laughs> that's what like. Yeah. The um the be- the funniest part was that they they kept they kept calling the woman's name because she had done it before. Yeah. Oh, she was just a repeat, repeat offender. offender. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
And um, I remember I was working that day, but I was obviously not in that section mm-hmm. where I could see anything or even hear anything. Yeah. So I heard about it through customers at your bar or your old bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I had someone airdrop me the video. Yes. I didn't want to. I didn't want to oh give, really, give out my phone number. So I was just hilarious. like, there's this really low quality video someone took. <laughs> Not a very good phone, so I just I f- had them. I wow. feel like that's another thing we run into a lot in this industry is those crazy, well, regulars in general, but especially the crazy mm-hmm. ones. Like, I was at a bar, I was at, so I was on a bar, a bachelor party either last year or the year before out in Florida. First night we get there, it was like a Thursday. We just wanted to go to a bar to have a chill. Like, we weren't ready to party yet. We we're like waiting for Friday and Saturday. So we just go to this chill bar right by our Airbnb. And I don't think we were there for like an hour, and suddenly they had a back area, like an outdoor area in the back. And we go out there, and someone's like, "Hey, there's this girl back there just beating the shit out of this oh guy." She, she, like, she took her shirt off, and she's just like beating him with it. And I'm like, "With what? the shirt? With the shirt? With the, yeah, yeah, that doesn't, uh, yeah, that doesn't like, do much." So like, well, no, but well, but she was she was also trying to like wrestle him too. But I don't know how. At some point, she just, she take felt the, the need to take her shirt take off. Take the shirt and strangle yeah. him with. At some yeah, point, she like, just felt the need to take her shirt off. Fill it with rocks. She's like beating yeah. the shit out of this guy, and so, like the cops came to take care of her, and they took her away. And I think put pennies in the sock or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they took her away. I think as they're taking her away we hear them say like oh yeah she also had like a firearm on her like she, oh, didn't, use, she didn't use it but like she had it so she had like, a gun and she was using her shirt yeah yeah exactly never took it out <laughs> wow but she had the guns like there yeah she's getting in trouble for for that or whatever but then yeah <laughs> as the cops like leaving the owners made like a comment they're like oh yeah that's like denise she does that and oh i'm like God. what <laughs> so the average tuesday night for <laughs> yeah, denise yeah, every thursday yeah, denise yeah, comes yeah. and gets blasted and fights somebody outside i was already i was already like dude fucking florida man like, yeah that's what shirt are you gonna use today yeah. denise has a gun <laughs> But he's using a shirt to beat the shit yeah. out of some guy. Oh, She's so man. drunk she forgot about yeah. her gun. But then, like, oh yeah, we'll be like, oh, we'll probably see her next week. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah ho- you shouldn't hopefully deal with any of people like that no. at the hospital doing valet parking for. Um, it is in Minneapolis, but yeah. you know, well, part of Minneapolis. Well, okay, so uh, a bad park. Okay, um, <laughs> downtown. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so I, I wasn't there, but um, my buddy Will, who works there, said that like on his first week. Uh, cause he works later. Mm-hmm. I work in the mornings. He works later. Mm-hmm. And so that's when all the fun stuff happens. Yeah. Um, we had, he had like this crackhead come up to him Oh boy. and oh, fuck, what did he say? He said something and then like dropped a bunch of shit, like a, you know, a lighter and like a pipe. He yeah. like, yeah. Dro- he dropped all his stuff and then like, and then like walked away. Like <laughs> of course. it was, it was so random. And then also there was one shift like last week I, I got there and, and they were like, yeah, some lady got shot at the park and died Yo. across the street <laughs> Yo, last geez. night. Okay, okay. It's like, so Because there's like our lot, and across yeah. the street is a park. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And apparently someone literally just got shot there last okay, night. And that's there crazy. was just like a whole scene there. So it's not nece- not necessarily your direct customers that are doing no. the ballet, but it's just like in the area there's a lot going on, and you could yeah. get caught in the cross. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Thankfully, I work in the morning. But, I was going to ask you know, what, your, what your hours are. Yeah, nighttime eight, is probably eight thirty more. to four thirty typically. Okay. That's um, not do that, they have yeah. overnight workers? So we stop ballet at ten. After that, I think it's self park, and um, and if. If there's a return, mm-hmm. they get the security to come and get their car or something oh, like that. Okay. But oh, that's a lot of people there. past then, they are overnight customers, so, yeah, yeah. so. they're not going anywhere. But, right. you know, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's more so the area mm-hmm. and not the customers. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully, you know, this definitely sounds like it has already been a successful, a better stepping stone Most from definitely. what you were what you were at. Um, and again. then, you know, on the side, you're still, you know, pursuing you know art and, and fashion. Or what are you doing mm-hmm. with with those these days? So I haven't started yet, but I'm gonna take online courses for fashion, nice. and then also just kind of. So I'm gonna redo my. Um, my desk setup. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go for more of a laptop setup mm-hmm. with a touch screen, but then I'm also I've got a uh, digital drawing pad, um, so I can use that on like Illustrator or whatnot yeah. to make designs. And okay. I'm just gonna teach myself how to sew and just like you know work myself into it and yeah. start seeing what I can create mm-hmm. and start making clothes on myself and, yeah. and uh, seeing what works really kind of to fall into my own style. And, That's awesome. And just independently learn what I need to learn because I've always been like that. Mm-hmm. I'm a very quick learner and uh, independent learner. What is there to yeah. learn at the um, school that you don't already know because you know obviously Most a lot. of it, I know, uh, yeah, I do, I, I've done my own independent research just out of interest and mm-hmm. it's really just more in depth. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm looking for is like, 
creating the clothes. Yes. Because that's, that's what I need to learn is like creating the clothes and sort of how to uh, get the dimensions right and everything. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so that plus a little bit of like the history about it, like fashion history, I would like to learn because I would like to incorporate that into my That designs. would be really cool. Yeah, I would. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love when... See, I could never do that. I could never have those <laughs> visions, but I love hearing you talk about thank that. You. That just gets me excited about it. I this. love that. Like, I love that. Seriously. I like oh, that we're you. all following our dreams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and what I like about these these service industry jobs, as much as they can suck, but like, so you do 8.30 to 4.30, wherever at mm-hmm. ballet, then you're done. You don't yeah. have to like go home and like, all right, I got to... You know, keep thinking about work or, oh, I got to work overtime. Like, there's really none of that unless it's, yeah. you probably want to. You can probably work some overtime, I'm guessing, if you wanted to or yeah, you yeah, really yeah. were inclined to. And they're pretty flexible. Hours. But otherwise, you're done at 4.30 and then you have all, yeah, your entire evening then to go and research that or go to class or exactly. whatever. 4.30 is a really yeah. good time to get on. Yeah, nice that's, time, yeah. that was kind of my goal is, like, the earlier I can wake up, the better. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to kind of shift my whole, um, um, oh, what? the fuck is that called the uh, like circadian, circadian rhythm, rhythm. Yeah, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yes i'm trying to shift my whole circadian rhythm uh to wake up early and uh because if i can wake up early then i can leave early yes and just have more of my day i've yeah. always liked that i hated getting off work and it's dark out mm-hmm, especially mm-hmm. working in the mall one thing i love about valet is it's outside oh yeah um so i get the sunlight i get the fresh air i get yes. to be outside the whole time okay. almost the whole time um, and that's so much better than the mall because there were no windows. There was, I couldn't see outside. I couldn't go outside. Like, I didn't even think about yeah. that. Cause like, yeah, we were, we were lucky enough to be right by the entrance there with yeah. the food court. So it's like, even though we couldn't always see it from our, from where we're standing, we could walk 10 feet. I can see the light. See if it's I would have to leave snowing. the mall. Yeah. You would yeah. have to. Yeah. And sunlight is so important. So yeah, yeah. I it's do. It's really motivating yes. to work outside. Yes. It really is. Um, Especially when, because we park at a blo- uh, about a block, two blocks away, okay, at a ramp, and so you can either walk through the hospital inside or outside, just mm-hmm. on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. And when it's nice out, I love taking that walk because yeah. the nice thing is we've got twenty, thirty people mm-hmm. doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. So if you're not there to grab a car, somebody else is. Nice. So you can take your time on that walk. They don't like micromanage you and and track you and everything. Same. So you can just. Take your time on the walk. Mm-hmm. We get really long, like hour-long lunch breaks. Mm-hmm. If uh, nobody even like, like people have taken two hours before. Oh wow! <laughs> you don't wow. even know. Just, like it's all good. He'll come yeah, back eventually. Exactly. Like, yeah, <laughs> I um, love that mentality. Yeah, it's really, really chillaxed, nice. and I, I love that about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even my hours, like I kind of just told them eight thirty to four thirty, mm-hmm. and um, I can like. I could basically come in whenever. I don't actually have a set schedule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, That's just what I'm trying to stick to right now. It's really nice. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like it's one of those opportunities where even if they were paying you less than what you were getting at Banana, Mm -hmm. you almost got to take it for that increased flexibility a little bit. It's really going to let you jump into that art and the fashion world like you want to, where maybe Mm -hmm. Banana wasn't as flexible with some of that stuff sometimes. So I think that gave me good experience. Banana gave me really good experience in the fashion world because I got a a lot of connections from that and I got to meet a lot of people and and learn a a lot about fashion. And also while I worked there, my style just got exponentially better. Um, cause like I had fine style before oh, yeah. then when I had joined, but yeah. like I was no average 15 year old how mm-hmm. I dressed, mm-hmm. but now like the, the, how old I am and mm-hmm. how old I dress, mm-hmm. like that gap has increased, mm-hmm. <laughs> which means my, which means my outfits have looked better and better. Yes. Yes. Where are you going to go for your classes for fashion or where they're are you? online? They're all online yes. through like so U of M or they it really varies. There's a lot. Um, I found some classes at Pearson's. There are oh, nice. ones that are offered at FIT and Ooh. even, uh, some like fashion institutes uh, mm-hmm. overseas in Milan. And Dang. in Paris, they offer um, they offer online courses. Sick, Wait, which is that's awesome. So cool. Yeah, and uh, though I would love to go to Europe for a while, um, which I might do anyways, because um, you live once. Yes, that's and awesome. um, I really got to. I just got to use technology to my advantage here mm-hmm. to to learn because um, I think it's really the greatest knowledge tool right well, um, right right now yeah we can do so much with yeah. it we really got too much it, well, yes I'm <laughs> yeah. definitely an argument for that bigger picture mm-hmm. what is what is your like end goal like something that will happen that you're like I made it 
Ooh, you know, like that's a good fashion question. show with your own Ooh. clothes, your own store like in a question. certain location. I think, I think I'll know when I made it when I when I walk out on stage after my first fashion show. Is there a celebrity that you're gonna want to see wearing your clothes? Not particularly. <laughs> um, I like that. Let's yeah. That's a good question too, though. I um really I never thought about that. So I might have to get back to you on that. Yeah, one, but that's a that's a good question. I um, yeah, I think I think I'll know when I made it when I when I walk out after after watching my whole line. Hello. Yeah. Watching <laughs> my whole line um, walk out and then walking out afterwards yes. and bowing as the creative director. Oh. I think that. That will be like I made. That I'll be, be invited awesome. to these shows. That would be so <laughs> such a great moment. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes, I want that for you so bad. Back for the wrap up. I Everybody, love it. welcome Ethan back for the finale here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, yes, sir. Liam, remind us again what the show is that you're doing at the moment, and you know when and where can people come see <laughs> you perform? Yes, sir. It's um, you're in town. You're in town. I think it's I think it's gonna be November seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth to. 21st, 22nd. Okay. okay. At my high school. Fridley. Fridley, Fridley High School. school. Nice, yep. nice. Come see you're Go in watch town. Liam, Liam, Not Liam. you're in town. You're in Only town. Only if it's good. Liam, <laughs> Liam, yeah. Keep us updated Liam's on Liam's going to be the no fun crotchety mayor of you're in town and not let yep. him. Yep. Cro- crotch. Yep. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And then actually, I'd love to hear from Ethan. How was the, how What was the wording you uh, gave to... Jack, about when will he know he's made it? I'd love to hear. Oh his yeah, yeah, yeah. That, too. that was because you're going to get into the clothing uh, hopefully mm-hmm. again in the future. Yeah. So I think we asked Jack basically, you know, when will you know that you've made it, or what would you consider the moment, you know, hopefully that you'll experience, like a celebrity, a certain celebrity wearing your clothes, or whatever, or yeah, whatever you want that moment to location. be. I'd love to hear that for you. Um, I think the moment for me would just be like once that's the only thing you're doing you know like you don't have yeah. to support anything else like you don't have to financially you know yeah and you like, can support yourself yeah you just you that. can you yeah. can just go off that and like that's that's your passion that's what you can yeah. do every day you know? where the hustle is like if you want to keep hustling it's just yeah. for fun and not yeah. for not exactly. for money like if you want to keep trading couches because mm-hmm. it's it's fun and that's kind oh, of yeah. a cool, cool thing to just go hunt for those deals yeah, yeah. but it's just for fun i like that I like yeah, that no lot. stress no like, yes. exactly you do whatever you want that, that. <laughs> yep Awesome. Well, all three of you, thank you for coming on. Especially, you especially Ethan. Awesome. In the yeah, last night. Special guest Ethan. Nice. I love that. He left halfway through the show, but hey. it's okay. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. For a he bit. almost passed out yeah, on the he show. He's a little stage fright. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I, may, so I might actually. That was kind of funny. I might. We might make that a thing. Frankly, in the future, it's like, are right, you going to leave halfway through and <laughs> come back at the? You know, come back for the finale. Come back for the finale. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got nothing. In, well, no, there's a little bit in here. Let's just do a little, just a little cheers. I got nothing for coming out. It doesn't matter. Just air drink. Cheers to everyone. Thank you all for Cheers. being on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. I still got a lot in here, so I won't do that, but awesome. All right. Yeah, yeah. That is clocked on episode I two. Knew it was going to fall over. <laughs> there we go. We Jared, are. Jared, pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Thank you for no, Thank you, Jared.